Hi everybody, I believe the video has started. Facebook doesn't always tell me for sure, but hopefully it has started. Yeah, I think we're, yeah, we should be good. But, um, so happy belated Memorial Day, everybody. Welcome to Fireside. My name is Heather Coleman, intuitive medium, animal communicator, <laughs> spiritual guidance coach. Uh, so I'm really excited for this video because we're doing two things. Well, three if you count, including Beth, who really likes to be part of the videos here. Beth, in fact, is a familiar. And I just like to mention that because animal familiars are fully intelligent. They understand everything we say. And when we got Beth, it was really cool for me to learn that snakes can be familiars. Up until then, I had um, experienced cats, which are the most common type of animal, dogs. Um, but animal familiars are not limited to only those types of animals. And so it's a little more rare, but it's not unheard of for a snake to be a familiar. Familiars understand everything we say, and they can, oh, Beth, she's like hiding, kind of. Yeah, snakes love to hide. Um, anyway, they understand everything we say. Hello, Beth. She looks like a candy cane, doesn't she? And um, they can communicate telepathically, give us messages. They act as spirit guides. So animal familiars are pets, which is what Beth is, what my cat Ashley is. And they are also spirit guides who are here in form. So I like to share that with people because I think so often we can feel alone or unsupported on our earthly journey. But when we know that it is possible for pets to be guides, it's like you've got a guide right there living with you as a beloved member of the family. So we're always supported on our earthly journey. So. Um, but today, what I want to do here is show you the three cards that I have selected for this week's messages. We are working with the Angel Prayers Oracle Deck by Kyle Gray. So I want you to t tune into your intuition and see where you're drawn for this week's card. So we've got card number one right here, card number one. And I didn't look at these until just now, but I'm going to tell you I cannot wait to share this card with you because I didn't plan this, even Beth, um, but wait till you find out what card number one is. It's so cool. I couldn't make this stuff up. But anyway, so this is card number one. This is card number two right here. Card number two. Boy, Beth is getting strong. And you know, she's so smart. Um, the angels just interjected. Snakes and other, other animals, all animals, are so much smarter than most people give them credit for. I'll tell you a story as soon as I show you card number three. This is card number three. So I'm gonna tell you a story about Beth in just a moment. So we've got card number one. We've got card number two. <laughs> we've got a frisky snake. And we've also got card number three. Um, Beth here, who is getting really big, as you can see. Here's her tail. Here's her head. <laughs> She's big now. Well, it, <laughs> the other day um, when I was holding her, I was sitting down on the ground. She hooked onto, um, around my waist. She hooked her tail around one arm and she pulled my arm up like a lever. Um, that's how smart a snake is. She's been with me enough and hung out with me like this enough. She knows that my arms go up and down. She wanted my arm up so she could move. Well, like she's doing now. There's the undulating snake. Um, so she actually is big enough that she pulled my arm up like a lever. <laughs> and um, so it just goes to show. Um, okay, so one more time for those of you that might be just tuning in. And just know that the cards are going to have messages for you whether you are on, I'm trying to find a nice way to show off Beth here, whether you are on Facebook or YouTube, the cards are going to have messages for you. One more time, here is card number one. Here is card number two. And then finally, here is card number three from our Angel Prayers Oracle Deck by author Kyle Gray. Also, after we interpret the cards, we are going to be doing a love and attraction candle spell. And I may have to hunt for where I left the... Oh, it's right behind me. <laughs> I'm going to grab it now so I can just tell you what type of candle and what type of spell we're going to be doing after we do the cards. It is attraction and love. I'm going to show you this. I got this candle from my favorite shop. It's down in Brewster, New York. It's actually two hours from me, um, but I'm there 
fairly often because my child goes to school there. I'm going to make sure we can still see the candy cane Beth here. Um, and so the shop is called Synchronicity. If you happen to love any of the things I share with you, they do have a website, Synchronicity uh, Shop. So you can get any of this right through their website. And I, I love their candles. They, they smell amazing. That's the first thing I want to mention is that this smells oh, incredible. Um, but the people that make the candles, that's really what's impressive. They, they really know what they're doing. They know what elements to infuse these candles with. And, uh, and the candles work. The candles work. So now I want to say before we get up to all that, you can use any candle you like to do. Um, it's a spell of any kind, an intention. I like to use candles for manifestation personally. Um, your intentions are more important than anything else. But just to me, in my mind, since I happen to love the shop so much, I happen to love these candles. I personally look at it as this talks a powerful punch. We're going to combine my intentions, my alignment, my magical abilities with what's been infused into this candle by very knowledgeable, very capable people who make these candles from a place of love. Uh, so this again is an attraction love candle. And what these candles say is they're made when the moon is right. So they're even made at the perfect time during the moon cycle to be most effective for whoever is going to use them whenever a person's going to use them. So again, we're going to do that at the end. But uh, without any further ado, because Beth is getting restless, if nothing else, let's do the cards. So were you drawn to card number one? I think she, oh, she's inside my, sh oh, she's inside my shirt indeed. So card number one spirit animal and this is why i was saying a moment ago that i could not make this stuff up even if i tried beth um i selected the cards before i went and got beth who is on the back of my chair you know she doesn't want to escape exactly but this is ha, hello you frisky thing but this is why people say that snakes are escape artists she's not trying to escape but she's just curious and she's exploring so um but spirit animal now I are actually, the angels are saying that I already gave you one of the messages from this card and I just didn't realize at the time because I hadn't even looked at the card, but one of the messages on this card is that if you have a, a, a very special pet, no matter what kind of pet that is, cat, dog, maybe something a little less common than a cat or dog, um, you are not crazy if you think that your animal is fully intelligent, maybe more intelligent than a lot of people that you know. You are in fact correct. Spirit animals are sometimes in spirit as spirit guides, but they also come into physical form to guide us and just to be a companion and a love and, and just a fun part of the family. So believe that you're not crazy if you think you have a super special bearded dragon or a snake of your own or a dog, whatever it might be. It could be something else, a parakeet. Believe that and just it is such things are possible and that's why um, people who are on this journey know that animals are very smart and if they have much to teach us they are not dumb the way some people seem to think that they are and so we know this right we know this um, so just know that you have many spirit animals guiding you if you're drawn to card number one and that it's very possible that your pets are part of that spirit animal team Let's move on to card number two, connect with music. If you're drawn to card number two this week, this is a nudge for you to listen to music that you like. It will help you to be more connected. Well, hi Beth, there she is. Um, it will help you to be more connected to the divine. If you have been feeling a little bit of blocked or maybe, you've, maybe you are having trouble understanding the guidance of your angels, listening to music that you enjoy will align you, will help align your frequency so that you can better understand and receive the communications that your angels are sending you. So card number two, connect with music. And that could be listening to music, that could be playing music, that could be anything of that nature. Finally, uh, for card number three, open your heart. And I love the order of these cards because this is coming right before we're gonna do this love and attraction candle spell. And to bring love into our lives of any kind for that matter does require an open heart. Oh, hi, Beppy. I love the synchronicity of this. We've got Archangel Chamuel here depicted wearing red. 
and we've got the candle, which is red, and actually it's like the same color red. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it, it, it really is the same color red. Archangel Chamuel is often called the eyes of God. So one thing Chamuel is amazing for is helping us to clearly see opportunities that come into our life. Um, whether that's in the form of new relationships, new interests, new hobbies, new work opportunities. Um, but this week, to me, this really feels like it's likely talking about new relationships and new opportunities to have fun, maybe to explore new interests, not necessarily on a paid basis. So if you're drawn to card number three, be open to that. Be open to new relationships. Card number three, people, one final message. If you have been hoping to manifest a new relationship, maybe a romantic one, sure, or maybe just you're, you feel a need to expand your social circle, that's going to happen for you. You're going to have a new relationship. Maybe some of you, it could be as many as three this summer. Um, and again, that could be in the form of friendships, work relationships, or reconnecting with family members. So um, the, the final part of that message that I love delivering on card number three Whatever relationship you really have been wanting the most, one or two types, it will be that type. So if you're drawn to this card, you're sitting here and you're thinking, I wonder what it would be. And the first thing that comes to your mind, if I would ask you, what type of relationship do you want the most? Whatever would come to your mind first and second, that will be the type that will come into your life. So I hope that message really resonates. Um, and I believe it will for so many of you now so just beth is hanging she's chilling she's gotten so strong she has a strong constriction but another thing i want to say about how amazingly smart animals are if you ever heard the term boa constrictor beth is not she is a nelson's albino milk snake but um snakes have that ability to clench so that they can stay safe and wrap around things beth has gotten super strong but the other night beth was around my neck she was doing what some people call constricting or undulating so she would not fall she was very tight around my neck but loose around the throat she was wrapped around like a scarf she was very loose on the throat she didn't choke me um that wasn't coincidence animals are smarter than people give them credit for <laughs> i just beth actually wanted me to say that again because this snake right here just know she understands every word i'm saying to you she can hear a lot of your thoughts because she's a spirit guide. So just know that she is a help with these videos and we will say thank you so much, Beth. You're the coolest snake ever. Now, should we move on, Beth, to that love and attraction candle spell? Cool. So what I wanna do first is say a couple of things on this. Um, the way that I selected this candle, and in fact, the way that I like to select all of my candles is very similar to how I select um, tarot and oracle cards. I go where I'm guided many, many times. I don't even use my eyes. I will shut my eyes or look away and put my hand out and I'll go where I feel I need to go. This candle I selected without knowing what type of candle it was. I uh, What I did, and I suggest this if you are shopping for any of the following fill in the blank, crystals, tarot and oracle cards, you can use this technique, candles, um, that kind of thing. What I did was I set the intention of Angels and guides and helping spirits, please help me to intuitively select the candle that is for my and my children and people closely connected to me, but mostly myself and my children, my two children. Please help me to select the candle that is aligned to my greatest and highest good. And so with my eyes averted without seeing where I was going, I selected this candle. Rebecca, good to see you. How are you? I don't know if you saw that we have um, Beth with us. I'm going to stand up because she's not kind of comfortable. So I'm not going to lift her up high because she's really comfy, but she's here. Um, so this candle, and the other thing, I want to say a couple things about this. Just know that love does not necessarily have to be romantic love. This candle is aligned to focus on that, but you could use, if, if you love this exact candle, and maybe you've already got someone, or maybe you're not really looking to attract romantic love, but just more love, you could still use this candle. Maybe love with your work or your pets or your children, whatever. This is still a great candle if you're drawn to it. You can get it online from the website for the shop I got this. So I just want to say that. Um, however, I want to also say that 
my spirit guides for months have been giving me a heads up that there is a good chance I will be meeting someone special later in the summer, probably within a few months or so. And the fact that I selected this blindly is what we call synchronicity, which is also the name of the shop. It's, an, it's a synchronistic sign that I am in flow with the universe. Well, now she's ready to come up high again. She was ready to move. So what I'm going to do here is invite you to join me. This is just a simple process when I like to cast any kind of a spell or use a candle. Since this is the first time I'm going to use this, and because I was drawn to have Beth with us, I'm going to hold this over my heart. Beth and I both are going to infuse this with the highest of intentions to manifest what is truly in our highest good. And this candle just smells amazing. So we'll take an inhale and an exhale. And this is something you'll want to do with cards as well. You get a new deck of cards. And then what I'm going to do is I went ahead and got this in case of any drips. This, in fact, is an empty candle trough um, from an old friend years ago that gave me a homemade candle that I burned. So I'm going to put it in here so that when it burns, it's got some place to go. And in fact, maybe we'll just do that so you can see it. What we're going to do is we're going to light the candle with, of course, the help of our expert resident spirit guide, Beth, here. We're going to light the candle, and then we're going to read the spell. And I invite you to uh, recite that spell with me if you're looking to manifest love of any kind, you know, romantic or just more friendship, family, whatever that might be, renewed family relationships. This is a great practice and a great spell. Beth, haha, <laughs> don't you try to go to the back of the chair. Ha <laughs> ha, sneaky snake. I don't think she's trying to be sneaky. Snakes are just kind of slithery by nature. But um, so we're going to read the spell in a little poem that's right on Mwah. The speaking of love, isn't she adorable? Hi, honey. Look, oh, pose. Say hello to everyone. We're going to read this. And I went ahead and removed this from the candle label. I like to save these because these are great incantations and spells. I call on forces higher than I to empower the dreams that I hold inside. Through this vision that knows my need, I ask for love's enchantment with all speed. May this work for me in the most correct way attracting the love I need today. I call on thee in perfect love and trust, working with me, sending what is just. Harming none and helping all is how it shall be. This is, I make true three by three by three. There's something about the number three. Um, I'm not gonna read this whole spell again, but I'm gonna read a part of it two more times. I call on thee in perfect love and trust, working with me, sending what is just. I call on thee in perfect love and trust, working with me, sending what is just. That last part, and I knew this was going to come up ahead of time, sending what is just. So I'm going to say this, if any of you out there are hoping to find romantic love, a um, couple things. If your love life has been a disaster for a while, so has mine since my divorce. Club. Um, in the spirit of being very private, I like to tell people things like that so that they know that they're not alone, especially when I'm reading for people and like they need answers to the really difficult questions. It's like, listen, I feel you. Um, but I want to say that the reason I explained to you all how I chose this candle blindly um, and without any expectations, just it was open up to whatever I'm guided to get what's best for me. I'll tell you, this is the first time this has happened that I've been getting little nudges that something's going to come along. I'm not just going to say you can't get a candle like this or try to do something to bring love into your life, but the way the angels want me to phrase this is that there are times in our lives when our human mind is ready for something and wants something, but our soul maybe is not. <laughs> Whether we have work to do on ourselves to really be ready for something, sometimes it's that. Sometimes Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes we are healed and we are in a good place, but our life chart, our soul's journey may call for us to have to wait a bit longer before finding the right fill in the blank. Great romantic partner, new home, career advancement, whatever it might be. So especially when it comes to love, this comes up a lot in readings. There are times that it is just time yet. It either is or isn't time on your life chart, which is the chart that your soul wrote before you were born. So this is probably going to work for me because it's finally time on the chart coming up soon. However, 
if you are hoping to attract love and it takes you a bit longer, that doesn't mean that your love spell didn't work. <laughs> love comes in many forms. I mean, I attracted this beautiful girl into our lives last fall. <laughs> and, um, you know, a love spell, just setting the intention to attract a great person, even if it doesn't happen right away for you, there are so many benefits from aligning your energy, from being open to setting the intention to find love. Sometimes the act of doing that will help to infuse more love into the relationships that are already in your life and improve the quality of not just your relationships, your work. So in other words, just setting the intention to become a great attractor for a romantic partner, maybe if you're anything like me, I'm gonna use me as an example, it didn't happen for a certain number of years because I needed to attract the right career opportunities and it did attract those things into my life. And I had so much love in my heart that I've been able to put into my work and I've been able to empathize with so many clients that have been through similar, that have had to overcome narcissistic abuse, family dysfunction, trauma, um, family divisions. Um, I've had the honor and the pleasure to help so many people who have been through those things. So just know that for some of us, and I'm one of these people, having to wait for love is part of your journey. And there are so many reasons why, but one reason alone is that it helps you to have that deep love and empathy for others so you can be a stronger beacon of light to others. And just know that if you have to wait a while for love, let that love grow and blossom in your heart. Focus on self-love, focus on love for your community, your, your home, your pets, whatever that might be. And just know that by doing those things, you are going to call love into your life at the perfect time time and just know that so often divine timing is different from our sense of what should be the right timing so with that in mind we're going to sign off thank you so much for joining me i hope you have a wonderful week much peace to you my website is heatherlcoleman.com and i wish you all the best and we'll see you next week oh and let's say bye to beth